Hello everyone, in this video I want to review the game Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, and this video will be followed by many screenshots that I've taken uh, during my gameplay. Let's start by saying that uh, no matter how people try to describe this game to me, nothing actually uh, prepared me to what I was about to experience. And just so you know, this is my first Animal Crossing game that I play. So for me, this is a brand new experience. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a game that takes you on an adventure. A beautiful, exciting and emotional adventure. During your adventure, you will discover so many things, surprises, exciting moments. You're gonna meet friends, new characters. You're gonna form different relationships. Some of them will be really good, some of them may be a bit less. Now the sense of isolation in the island alongside the beautiful ambience, background, side noise and visuals really create a unique atmosphere. For example, when you walk and just stop for a moment, just listen to the wind, when you pay attention to the cricket sound, those little small things that you usually don't pay attention at all in your daily life, here in this game, every moment is special. The visuals in this game are just brilliant in my opinion. I mean, I love cartoon style visuals, but here they are kind of rounded. I really like the color palette itself during the day, uh, at night, especially in the sunset. Alongside with beautiful sound effects and music, this further elevates the experience and makes you enjoy every single second on this island. The island itself doesn't have many villagers, but the thing is that because of that, every relationship is important. Talking to villagers is also a fun experience. Uh, there are so many lines written to those characters, so most of the time you find new lines and some of them are really funny. I also really like the chat groups when you enter a conversation with two other villagers are talking uh, and you can even get to intervene and say your saying. Animal Crossing also hosts a range of mini-games. This is part of the DNA of the game. This means from time to time you'll go fishing, catch bugs, maybe uh, catch some falling stars. And even when new events introduce, they have their own really cool and fun uh, mini-games to play. Although part of the end game, in quotation, is uh, creating uh, your island uh, to your liking, uh, terraforming it, uh, crafting items and positioning them anywhere on the island the way you like, still, even without those, the game still has so much to offer. Although the game doesn't force you to do anything, it just has this kind of a relaxed progression, uh, which in a way it encourages you to get into certain points by doing certain activities in order to unlock new options. For example, the terraforming. Uh, without this, you won't be able to terraform your island and if you want to be able to become more creative and be able to have more control on how your island actually looks like, you probably want to follow these uh, progression lines in order to unlock certain options. For example, my personal favorite activity is fishing and I can spend hours in this. This is so relaxing and fun. And the thing is that you have the option to collect different items contributed to the museum and this includes uh, bugs, fish, even art uh, and fossils. So you feel this kind of a sense of uh, rediscovering new things that there's a purpose to them. And when you do this, uh, further things will unlock. But again, the game doesn't force you to do this. You can play the game anywhere you like. And of course, it depends on the amount of free time you have to play this game. You can play this game 30 minutes uh, a day. Some, of course, play it hours a day and some even, even fewer. The, the thing is that uh, no matter how much time you have in your hand to play this game, it will always feel fun and satisfying. I can play this game, for example, one day, 10 minutes, and I still find that some things that I can do in this time, sometimes I spend one hour, and sometimes even four and five hours. Still, it doesn't matter how much I play, every time I play, I enjoy it. From time to time, you find yourself meeting new characters coming to your island, offering you some goods. Some of these items are really unique and interesting. So you probably want to be there from time to time in order to make sure that you get those items. But this is the kind of game that doesn't want you away for too long. 
wants you to play it. For example, if you're away for a long time, maybe some villagers will leave. That being said, there are many villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons, so there's always new characters to meet. Each one is gonna has its own unique look and uh, kind of variation of different type of personalities. Sometimes you might want to let a villager go because you're excited to see what other villagers are out there. And that's okay because maybe you're gonna meet the one that you really, really enjoy being around with. This is another thing to look forward to. Speaking of which, one of the most exciting things about this game is having those expectations of what's going to come tomorrow. Now the reason for this, the main reason, is because this game is actually tied to the real world time. So when you wait for something to happen tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow also in the real world. For example, when a shop is going to upgrade or a new museum is going to open tomorrow, this is something to look forward to, to the next day. Not just the next day in the game, but the next day in real life. Now, although there is the option to manipulate the internal clock of the Nintendo Switch, this is something that I've decided not to do. One of my main reasons is having those expectations, as I'm, and I mean for the long run. This is the kind of a game that uh, I want to play for years to come. And I'm not rushing anything. I also want this game to be kind of a relaxing experience, so I don't want it to feel like kind of a, a job. On the other hand, I can feel and understand the reasons behind those who actually do this. And sometimes you want to expedite things because there are other things that you want to get and which probably take a long time. And sometimes you don't have this time to invest in the game. And this is a way to actually expedite things and able to reach to a certain progression faster compared to if you have done it without it, without actually changing the internal clock. Whatever your, reason, your reasons are, everything is fine, you can do whatever you like. But for me, there's no reason to rush it. I just enjoy playing it as is. If there's something really great happening uh, tomorrow or two days, or maybe I need to wait for something to happen, I'll wait. I have no problem with this. And this actually creates the expectation for something to happen. And again, this is one of the things that makes me really like this game. So for example, if I play today and there's something tomorrow, I really enjoy waiting for the tomorrow. I really enjoy waiting for the next hour. This for me, this is one of the main reasons why I actually uh, enjoy opening the game the next day and playing it. Now, when you get to the point where you actually can tear from the island, you have lots of uh, items uh, which you can um, create the island uh, of your dreams, sometimes you're going to miss stuff. And this stuff, you, if you're aware that such exists, you want to get to a point where you can actually unlock those items. Uh, and the thing is that uh, if you don't have them, it can take quite some time. For example, when I start designing my island, uh, I have these uh, moments where I actually feel that I'm missing so many items, which I can actually develop the item the way I actually want to. That being said, I didn't even want to rush that. I just had so many other things that I can do. And I also felt comfortable in understanding that even if I don't have them in the future, I will. And until then, there will be enough things to get me entertained. And eventually I will get to the point where I'll design my island in a way that I'll feel that uh, I'm in a place, in my dream place, basically. Now, all that being said, Animal Crossing New Horizons allows you to trade items. And this is one of the things that you can do without actually uh, uh, time traveling, by just finding friends which you can exchange uh, items with. So if you are wanting, for example, a certain item, you can ask people maybe online or social media uh, whether they have it and you can maybe you can pay for it in some way uh, using your own items. This means that Animal Crossing New Horizons extends itself uh, beyond uh, just the game itself. People are very active in social media, like in Reddit for example, trying to trade different items or inviting other people to uh, sell their turnips when the prices on their island is high. Now because we have this northern and uh, uh, south hemisphere, you have different uh, bugs and fish uh, roaming around the island uh, depends on where you are located. So this means that if you want, for example, to create a sculpture of a certain uh, fish that is not available on your island, for example, this month, you might 
contact a friend who is in the southern hemisphere and then you can go fish there or capture a bug there and have it in your island available there. Now this type of uh, multiplayer, uh, online multiplayer is really exciting. Of course you have the local multiplayer as well. And you can also invite other people online no matter where they are in the world so they can come and visit your island. You can make them your best friends and then they can do uh, in your island many of the things that you can do. Uh, the thing is that the online multiplayer is a very exciting way uh, because it's like inviting uh, other people to your own home. Now there's also the seasons. The seasons is amazing. For example, here you can see uh, uh, how the hardwood trees look in spring, like cherry blossom, and it's just beautiful. So there's also expectation for the season like we have in real life. And when it comes to Animal Crossing New Horizon, you can expect it to be amazing. And every season and every few weeks you're going to have this unique event. Actually, it's more frequent than I even thought. So we had the Bunny Day and then the May Day and then the uh, uh, Nature Day. I mean, all this in the expense of like two weeks or something. I was blown away. Although these uh, events doesn't really kind of... Uh, it's not a like big DLC that comes to the game. There can be even one mini game. But they're designed to be so much fun and even then when you have something new it's very exciting and you enjoy it a lot the game also makes sure that you always be surprised with something you can shoot balloon and discover new items you can get items from villagers and you can also find new emotes that allows you to interact with villagers and also your friends there's a tech option capability that allows you to type and show the text so you can kind of chat with your friends in game without even needing uh, the Nintendo app for this. There are also many clothing items in the game and you can even change your avatar, your hairstyle, your eye colors and uh, this way you can actually uh, create an avatar which you feel comfortable with and you can change it anytime. Uh, sometimes you want to dress for example for a particular event with your friend, sometimes you just feel like dressing to match the season. There are even a clothing store in this game, Able Sisters. Uh, so you can really find unique and interesting clothing. Some you can actually create uniforms. So we kind of run the same thing, which includes maybe the shoes, the pants, the shirt, and a hat. You can see one of the characters called Celeste. Uh, and this is the night where I was uh, capturing uh, falling stars. And you can actually, it's kind of a mini game, uh, which allows you to uh, capture falling star by just pressing the A button. And you kind of wish upon the falling star. And then the next day, again, expectation for the next day, you're going to find stars fragments around your island near the beach. You can then collect those and then craft new items. You can even buy things in the Nook Shop, for example, and this will arrive to your mail the next day. Uh, when you buy art, for example, again, you're going to come the next day. Again, having those expectation to what's going to come tomorrow. The game gives you this... Uh, uh, fun experiences bit by bit and making sure that you won't consume everything at once so fast so you want to play this game the next day this of course gives the developer more time to even create more things and make sure that the player base is maintained and people enjoy playing the game for the long run now we can talk about animal crossing in your horizon without talking about the tons of cuteness that is injected into this game this starts from beautiful character design, amazing, amazing cute animations, the interaction, the funny interactions, the way the world itself is designed to host these beautiful characters. It's amazing seeing that characters actually interact with the environment, they actually feel like really living their life in the island. So for example, when one character sees a butterfly flying around, they might run after it, just inspecting it or just use their net in order to try to capture it. Sometimes, for example, when they see a wren running from wasp when we hit a tree, uh, the young is going to be surprised and kind of shocked that you see wasp running after you. Now, of course, we can't ignore the singing. The singing is such an adorable part in this game watching your character singing, maybe themselves, by themselves, maybe together with other animals and singing some cake and song. Now the same goes to the language itself. No matter what they say, they always, always sound cute. So cute.
All this come together to build a world that you really want and enjoy being part of and you know, kind of a place where you want to call your second home. And unlike in real life, here you actually have a high degree of control of what's happening. Even though there are things that are not in your control, many things are actually are. And if you know, of course, in real life, uh, we are actually obliged to do many, many things and sometimes things that we don't like to do, but still we do this. So this uh, type of freedom in the game is very uh, relaxing. Uh, uh, but this is something, of course, we need to strive for getting in real life. But uh, in this game is much easier and in real life you need to do lots of things together or maybe be lucky. You can see me hanging around with the first person which I actually met online and I went to visit their island. Actually, we offer a few things in exchange. Uh, it was such an amazing experience. You can't really describe this type of experience until you do this yourself. And the same goes to many other things in this game. You can see me with the adorable Marina, which is one of my favorite characters right now. Now I hear other people asking what Animal Crossing is all about. Well, it's all about all those things together. So some people will probably want to uh, uh, point you to certain things that they like, but the thing is that in order to understand the game, you have to experience it. Because it's a host of a mixture of experiences that just blend so well together, which the only way to really uh, understand, comprehend how this feels, you need to play the game. And sometimes when somebody tells you that one thing is really exciting, it doesn't mean that you're going to enjoy this one. I don't enjoy everything, but as a whole, as a package, I enjoy it a lot. Now, in terms of creativity, this is something also very important in the game. Uh, people enjoy being creating. In my opinion, I just can't see my life without actually creation. Now I do this as a web and app developer myself. I like creating, I just use digital in order to create things. But the thing is that uh, these games give enough freedom for people to feel uh, that they can create something of their own. You can craft your island the way you like it. There are plenty of items for you to discover and do this. You can terraform your island. You can even create textures and not just you create them, you can even share them with other people and use other people's textures in order to use them in the game. Now the game will give you some basic textures you can uh, work with, like this one that you see here in the game. But the path, you, the rock path that you see here, somebody else actually created it. You can see the flowers here on the wooden floor. This is somebody that created it. So I just import it into the game and use it. Now of course you can mix and match and create your own beautiful island and people are creating gorgeous, gorgeous islands. Now, I know in some ways when you see this, this can be a bit encouraging because uh, no, not everybody feels they are very creative. But just keep in mind that this type of uh, creative thinking takes time. So it's not something bad to just get inspired by other people's work. And you can do this and take your time. You won't get it in just a single day. So don't be encouraged in that way. Just start creating and eventually you will just continue improving more sections and sections of your island and eventually you will be f satisfied with what you have done. I think also that this type of uh, uh, freedom of creation in this game is one of the main reasons why people fall in love with it. Alongside with other things, but the, the ability to uh, create your own place and have a control, large control over how you actually I know will turn out to be is something that motivates people to continue playing, unlock new items, inviting friends to see their uh, island, and putting a lot of effort into it. And it can take a lot of time, sometimes in hundreds of hours, but this is something that will continue changing. For example, after you reach a certain point with design your island, like in real life, you're gonna make changes, you want something else. So you continue terraforming and changing and getting new items that you might feel like this theme is going to be more exciting. So it's pretty cool to continue playing the game and making changes. Now I have to admit that 
Of course, there are many other games where you have more kind of environment that feels more lively. But the thing is this, this is the secret in this game is that even with relatively uh, small amount of uh, NPCs and items, the island feels so lively. So why is that? I think one of the reasons is that the developer uh, was smart to not create a very big island, which might, you know, people feel this when they play open world games, where they have a huge world and not so much to do in. But when you create a small world and you pack it with uh, even not too many things, it actually feels very, very fun, lively, and uh, entertaining to be in. Now also because it's small, you pay attention, as I mentioned, to very small details. Uh, and this is something that, uh, you know, when you play a big game, open world game, there's so many great items there and designs in terms of level design. But when you just go through it, you don't even pay attention to it. You can just go and just, uh, you know, uh, ignore many of the beautiful things out there. But in this game, because it's a slow pace, because the island is small, uh, things just pop up more compared to other games. Now in this photo, you can really sense the ambience, the night ambience, which is beautiful. And this lets me talk about the game being a relaxing experience. Now, I remember first when I didn't understand what Animal Crossing is all about, I was searching like, you know, uh, is it fun? Uh, is it not boring? No, what is game is essentially. And one of the things that people said that the game feels relaxing. So suddenly, uh, you know, uh, I can just walk in the game from one point to the other. It might be take uh, half a minute, minute, something that's going to just round around the island searching for something. It's going to take maybe two, three, even five minutes. Uh, and the thing is that by this time, maybe I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to uh, enjoy walking and looking at my island, maybe seeing something they can pick up, maybe meeting a character and have a little chat. Uh, so this has a kind of a very relaxing effect. Also walking around uh, near the beach at the sunset is also something very relaxing. And the thing is that you might not understand this effect immediately, but when you play this game over time, you feel much more relaxed. Now, of course, right now when I'm in quarantine, there's no kind of rush and anything, but in the daily life, when you just do many things and kind of rushing, and, and trying to, and there's very large expectations from you to do things. Uh, you can be stressed even without actually knowing this, because you're used to it. But still, the body, the the mind is in stress. If you just log into this game, you actually can feel, really feel the effect. You know, I hear it so many times. It's people saying and even showing that they don't do nothing in the game. Just you can just stay for five minutes and just enjoy the atmosphere you know what some of the things that i really like is just creating my own moments like going to sylvia and have a party dance just sitting around the village and watch the sky you know those things those little things Now, even with all this, there are many other surprises. For example, uh, trying to catch a Toronto light now or a scorpion, or for example, breeding flowers, or shaking trees to find maybe an item, some coin. Getting into the store daily to see whether there are cool items, you know, and because it changes every day, you might find a cool item, maybe a really cool new looking umbrella, maybe an item that we're looking for. Going around the island, maybe you're going to see a big fish, maybe it's going to be a rare fish you don't really have. Maybe if you hang around at night, maybe you're going to find a ghost and it will give you a mission and then if you finish it, you get rewarded for this. Sometimes when you walk on the island, you're going to find new characters just visiting your island and offering you some really interesting stuff. It can be a minigame, it can be uh, some new items for sale. So there's always something to look forward to. 
Now, even in this game, of course, you have the things that you need to do in order to achieve stuff. For example, chopping trees to get uh, wood uh, in order to craft. Uh, these are the basic materials that allows you to craft things. Maybe go fishing because you can get uh, some fish that you can sell for a high price. And this way to get uh, money in the game, which called bells, which allows you to buy items. So it's not that everything comes for free in this game, no. I mean, not just by discovery. Sometimes you need to work for it. Uh, but the thing is that those activities are very fun and entertaining. Now, Mystery Islands, like the Toronto Island that you can see here in those photos, uh, are a really fun way to kind of have a kind of a break from your island. Those are pre-created islands. Each one has its, its own unique uh, uh, features. For example, you can find, I found a, a big rare fish island with all of the fish there are actually big, and this of course increases the chance to find uh, rare fish. In one of the other islands, I actually could find some uh, uh, flowers that they don't have natively on the island, including fruits, like apples that they didn't have natively on my island. Uh, speaking of which, uh, one of the cool things uh, that I really like about this game is being able to trade with other people some goods that you don't have natively on your island. In fact, you can't actually get it unless you trade it with another person. This is kind of a way to uh, encourage players to connect with other people playing the game and exchange goods. Now, the island is not the only thing you can actually uh, design. You can also design your house. And the more you expand it by just returning the lawn to Nook, uh, you're going to uh, have more rooms and you can decorate them the, uh, whatever you like. And you can also be graded based on how you design your island. And there are actually some rules that can apply here in terms of uh, uh, home design, which are embedded as part of the game itself. If you follow them correctly, you're going to be rewarded for a higher score and you can even get a trophy for this. Now this happens, uh, the evaluation. Uh, there's also evaluation for both the house and the island, by the way. Uh, the first for the house is going to be every Sunday, which is something, again, to look for every week. And regarding the island, uh, there are things that you can unlock after you reach a five star. So this is kind of a long term goal which exists in the game compared to the very short ones, uh, which uh, encourage players to design the islands uh, by uh, in a certain way in order to achieve the five star rating. Now, in terms of long-term goals, there's also the golden items, which also uh, you're going to achieve. Sometimes you're going to achieve this uh, relatively quickly. Others, you need to really progress and achieve many things in order to unlock them. And whatever I say here is based on my experience in the game. And there are sure there are many other things to look forward to. And of course, this game continues to evolve, and I'm sure that many things will be introduced, uh, more than probably going to see more uh, kind of a bigger DLC to this game. Uh, but all those uh, kind of mini DLCs, additions to the game, are still very fun to play. And like I said, there's always the tomorrow to look forward to. And this is what makes the game so much fun. The thing is that I can't even cover all the things. Uh, uh, in just a single review because there are so many of them there will be more more will be introduced later on I still do think that you need to get this game because you need to experience the game yourself. If you have a friend who have the game, maybe you can ask them to just play the game so you can feel how it plays. Now, just so you know that I'm uh, reviewing this game while in quarantine. So actually I have more time to play this game, but also the same breath, uh, this game actually uh, uh, was available in the perfect time where I can actually have some of those relaxing times because I do have some moments where I feel down. In fact, that's the reason I opened a YouTube channel, because I felt the need to share and uh, socialize people online because I was in quarantine. And actually, the, was, it was the first moment I actually opened the channel, but this is actually the moment where I decided to post more videos into this channel in order to share it with others. And the last thing is about the community, which is amazing. 
uh, you can visit uh, Reddit, Animal Crossing on Reddit, and you can really clearly see that people are just creating so many amazing stuff with it and sharing so many cool and funny moments. Because this game is so dynamic, it does create this type of uh, moments that you want to share. Uh, and because there are so many characters in this game and so many events, and there's always something new to discover. This is why when you see other people's things, it's always something new and exciting, right? You I always go to Reddit and see it's kind of a, what's something new and I always discover something new, always. Many things that I haven't discovered myself in terms of uh, island design ideas, instead of textures, instead of funny moments, interaction with characters, so many things. Of course, I'm not talking about the something atmosphere which are, they are already experiencing things that I'll discover later on when the season change. And every month you have new fish and bugs and there's also the thing to wait for the next month. Ah, endless things. So overall Animal Crossing New Horizons is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. I can definitely tell you that there are some many uh, really uh, beautiful memories uh, for my childhood and I'm not a uh, an young uh, gamer. yeah. Uh, so as an aging gamer, I can tell you that uh, this brings so many good memories from, uh, from my childhood. And actually, when I search for games that remind me of game of my childhood, uh, many of those didn't answer those expectations. The thing is that maybe, you know, the, those memories didn't land with what I actually need now uh, as a mature gamer. Uh, so it didn't fit and I didn't actually enjoy playing them again. Uh, but the thing is that Animal Crossing as a modern game actually brought everything together and really gave me that kind of uh, uh, feeling of being a child again, playing those games where I was a child, but still in a modern and very uh, different form. And I can definitely say that none of the other games that I played came close to this experience. And uh, I was searching for a game like this for a long time. I just didn't know that Animal Crossing is actually the game that I need to play. And yeah, I could easily skip it. But luckily Nintendo uh, do very good marketing and actually the game looks so good and actually transfers so well in videos that it's really hard to ignore it. Now there are things that should be improved in my opinion, like multiple selection, seeing the breakage percentage of your items, uh, just auto using your letter, etc. But those are really little things. Now about the camera controls, so we actually can't rotate the camera at 60 degrees, but, but when I realized how actually the developer took this into account to design many of the uh, mini games and some of the visual aspect of the game, uh, it turned out to be uh, kind of, uh, uh, they use it in a good way in order to make the game more exciting to play. For example, some of the uh, experiences built here, uh, they're built around this limited field of view. Uh, for example, when I just walk with the net, uh, a trying to like can surprise me because I can't see the entire area and just look around. Uh, she can actually come from a hidden area where I don't have uh, a view of. I just want to add some photos from one of the most memorable nights that I had in the game. And also the perspective view of how the game looks like, it's kind of look like, like the island is on a ball in a way, when you move things come into view. Maybe it's also, uh, also good for optimizations by the way, because you don't need to see kind of a far view of everything. Uh, nonetheless, uh, whatever it is, 
uh, it's still a really fun way to uh, uh, see things. So we just walk into the island and just things come into view from far away. So for example, if there are many items there and you know, I don't see them yet until I walk a bit more and then they just come into view and it's exciting. And also when the characters are just visiting the island, maybe you won't see it, but when you walk there, it will suddenly appear into view. So even this design is very unique and interesting and very exciting in the game itself. So overall, what can I say? I'm just blown away. I just can't say anywhere, I'm just blown away how amazing this game is. And I just can't recommend it enough. Uh, in the last note, uh, just uh, so you know, uh, I played this in the Nintendo uh, Switch, the regular one. Uh, the light one doesn't have um, vibration, from what I know. Uh, but I think with the, the vibration itself, that is used really well, it makes some of the mini games really fun to play, like fishing for example. So the, even the... Um, the vibration uh, controls works very well in this game. So I'm just saying for you, if you want considering playing this game, uh, whether on the light or on the Nintendo Switch, uh, the regular one, uh, the vibration controls actually, for me, uh, made the, some of the experience more fun uh, because I turned them off and on and I found, for example, the fishing to be uh, more fun to play with vibration. So this is it. I know it's long, but I really want to put everything through for those who actually haven't played the game just yet. And I think they are thinking of getting it. Uh, I hope this one will um, uh, help you out, help you with your buying decision. And also prefer putting photos instead of just gameplay, because I think that some of the photos just capture the moment and help you kind of stop for a second and appreciate the little details. So this is it, hope you enjoyed this, my review of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Of course, more gameplay videos will come soon. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.